Good evening, everyone. My name's Charles Everest. I'm the General Manager of Policy and Advocacy at the Victorian Farmers Federation. We've also got Lisa Gervasoni, our Senior Policy Advisor for Land and Planning. Um, thank you for joining us tonight for this webinar, um, which is focused on Victoria's new transmission plan and how farmers can best um, have their say as part of the government's work on that plan. Um, tonight's um, webinar is being recorded. Um, as you as you may be aware, the current uh, community consultation around um, the transmission plan, which looks at um, mapping uh, strategic agricultural land um, in particular. Um, originally, the mapping tool and consultation was closing on the 31st of January. Um, thankfully, uh, the VFF wrote to um, the Minister for Environment, um, Lily D'Ambrosio, and um, could I just ask that everyone please try and keep themselves on mute so we don't get some uh, noises through. Uh, but the VFF did write to Minister Lily D'Ambrosio seeking an extension um, uh, in time. And uh, we were informed today that, that was, uh, that's been granted. So the mapping and engagement tool and survey um, is now extended out to the 16th of February, which is good news and gives us all a bit more time uh, to be able to get that information back to the government. Um, as you know, transmission is Uh, you're muted at the moment. Apologies. Um, it's a key and important issue because uh, the Victorian government in a report has said that up to 70% of agricultural land could be subject to renewable energy development if the state is to, is to meet its targets. Um, that comes off the back of the renewable energy zones which have been identified um, by AEMO and the government, and those are very much the, the key areas of focus for renewable energy development and the associated transmission that is required um, as part of that. Um, unfortunately, the transmission projects that we have seen uh, underway in their planning in Victoria so far, VNI West and um, the Western Renewables Link, uh, are, very, are very much um, uh, are very much based on uh, being funded uh, on the cheapest cost to consumer and not really taking into account the impact on uh, regional communities, regional economy, and of course, agricultural production and, and our food security. Uh, and that has been very much the basis of the VFF's advocacy, um, seeking in particular a plan uh, for for transmission, uh, and that is something that the VFF first called for before the state election in 2018. Um, we uh, have welcomed the Victorian government's recent commitment to undertake um, that plan. Unfortunately, that plan um, seems to have come too late for those um, in the way of the VNI West and the um, WRL. Um, but it's important that uh, we take part in in the government's consultation around this plan for future developments, which will have an impact um, on farming communities. Um, in addition to that, the VFF has been very much focused on um, ensuring that there are proper land access rules there that protect farmers' rights, that protect things like biosecurity, um, that ensure um, that land is properly rehabilitated, um, particularly post-construction. Um, we've been part of the Essential Services Commission's work on that, and we are also undertaking some um, more detailed policy work at the moment, particularly around the creation of a, a comprehensive code of practice for transmission. Um, there's been a whole bunch of work also making sure that um, landholders and stakeholders are, are properly recognised and properly treated. And we have seen uh, numerous cases of transmission companies um, really mistreating farmers and, and, and not being respectful of landholders. And that is a key piece of work that the VFF is involved in as well. Um, and we are also working um, 
towards ensuring that there are proper commercial consent arrangements as well. Um, it's been said time and time again that farmers um, farmers are, uh, may very well be happy to host um, this infrastructure if it's done properly, uh, if it's done listening to communities, done in a way that limits the impact on agricultural land and farmers um, uh, you know, are, are fairly uh, compensated for that as well. Um, but the key focus here is around how we actually plan plan around those issues um, and uh, as part of the Victorian government's transmission plan um, and which falls out of its uh, transmission investment framework. Um, we're working closely with the government to try and uh, put forward the data and information that's required, particularly to um, protect strategic agricultural land, um, particularly things around high value soils and irrigation districts, um, but that can extend further as well. And we need to also take into account our supply chains, freight routes, uh, the secondary industries that are connected to, to primary production as well, uh, and, and limit the impact and make sure that uh, any renewable energy Development or transmission development um, is is happening in a in a in a way that is compatible with the agricultural use in that in a particular region. Um, so, as part of this planning process, the government have launched uh, an online mapping tool, and that's the real focus of tonight's discussion, as well as the survey. And Lisa, in a moment, will speak to um, that process and how you should use that tool and to best effect, um, as well as how you take part in the survey and how you can prepare for the community meetings that VicGrid will be undertaking in March. We don't have dates and locations for those meetings at the moment, but VFF will make sure that you are, uh, are made aware of that. Um, I should say that if you wish to ask any questions tonight, um, we do want to keep tonight um, quite quick and, uh, and uh, get the information across to you. But if you do have questions, please feel free to put those in the chat and we'll endeavour to uh, to answer those live, um, but we're also happy to follow up with you uh, individually and, and also um, put those questions and answers back out to the VFF membership as well. Um, with that, um, I should also just note quickly the different resources that you can access that, um, that will assist you in this process as well. Um, for those in particular who are along the Western Renewables Link and VNI West, um, there are numerous fact sheets there. Um, we will make these links available um, when, when this uh, webinar and information uh, goes out uh, through the VFF website. Um, I'd also ask that you familiarise yourself with the VFF Managing Entry to Farm Policy Statement. Um, that really guides the VFF principles and the things that we are um, we are asking government to look out for when um, particularly around land access issues. Um, there are other there are other sources, um, other pieces of information from the energy charter around land access and social license, uh, information from the Australian Energy Infrastructure Commissioner who the VFF works closely with, Energy Safe Victoria as well. And then uh, at the moment we are preparing some further fact sheets with information about the the known impacts to to farm operations. Um, so with that, I'll hand over to Lisa, and uh, Lisa will run you through the uh, the online engagement process. And I might quickly just talk to that that last piece about the fact sheets. Um, we're bringing together what we know or we think we know from some of those impacts and looking at some of the resources out there and how well we think they're addressing issues. But I've popped my email address in the chat. Um, I'd really love to hear your feedback on, on those documents or what you think um, VicWid needs to know about, about that detail. So, um, feel free to, to loop me in on any issues, concerns, or things you think we should be um, preparing a little bit more of a background on for um, this process. Uh, now, when we come to uh, what the, the government's actually asking for feedback um, at this very early stage of the process on, um, they've got two tools. They've got a mapping tool 
and they've got a survey tool. And you can um, feel free to use both. Um, so the mapping tool is actually quite uh, simple. You can search for it um, through the government's Engage tool, but we have it just included the actual direct links to the map and the survey. And to be involved, you can you can either search for your location. Um, sometimes that works better than others. Um, or you can use the plus and minus to zoom in because you kind of know where you are in the state. And then it's as simple as um, clicking add a pin. And Charles, if we move to the to the next slide. Um, then uh, I've got the little zoom in view for you all there. Um, so I've just chosen an area that um, has an active transmission plan at the moment. Um, so when you click a pin, um, it gives you a range of different types of pins. Um, so I'm guessing a lot of you will be doing choosing the green agriculture and resources pin, but you might also want to um, identify cultural heritage areas, which I'm taking to be the broader sense, so um, Aboriginal and post-contact heritage, social issues, natural environment and biodiversity. Um, and the orange um, is if you think it's appropriate for a, um, a renewable energy zone. So RES is renewable energy zones. Next slide, Charles. So uh, each, no matter which of those pins you choose, they tend to have the same questions. So what is the value or feature you have identified? What VicRid, so what they, um, what you think they need to know in, in planning for that? Um, so again, for... Uh, renewable energy and agriculture, it's it's probably good to start thinking about what is significant about your area um, that might need some protection or might need certain issues to be um, properly addressed for it to be suitable for either generation or transmission. Um, my if if we were improving this on behalf of government, um, it is a pin. It's like the old um, boards where you, you put a tack in it. But there is software out there where you can pull up an aerial photo and you can actually mark areas. You can put polygons around it. Uh, and I've included a link there to a Riverside camping fact sheet. Um, that teaches you how to do that. Obviously, this is a different issue, but the process in actually going in and, and um, creating your own map is the same. And that's that can be handy if you want to give them a bit more information than just what the pin is, or if you want to bring that along to a community meeting or do your own um, submission to VicRid. Next one, thanks, Charles. Now, what I've done here is I've gone in and, and looked at the, the current um, the current plans, and if I, I believe the email I received today, I think they've either had 2,000 surveys filled in and 1,000 pins on the map or the other way around. But think about the fact that um, the audience looking at these things are basically going to be energy bureaucrats, either electrical engineers or policy people in that, that broader energy space, they're not really going to know the intricacies of agriculture. So I've chosen this one because it actually does give a little bit more detail than just saying agricultural land. It mentions, you know, the quality of that land. It's not the only way you can identify land, but at least it gives that bit more information. And then in the response to the question of what you need to know, 
it's reinforced that. It's talking about the fertility, the rainfall, the ability to access um, um, water from bore systems, it's food production. Um, so obviously this is potato growing, so they've mentioned that. Uh, so that that's just one example of how you can provide a little bit more detail. You could also um, add to that that, you know, you irrigate and the concerns you have about irrigation or the potential concerns you have about um, needing to stubble burn or operate a drone. So if you look at some of those um, resources that some of the companies have out there about what they think the impacts on agriculture quite, might be, it gives you a little bit of that information and we will give you a, a quick overview as well. So um, it's better to actually put a bit more information in than less. Thanks, Charles. So um, just to give a, a really high level um, prompter of, of what potentially some of the issues may be, we're looking at, at generation separate to transmission. So at the moment, the two main types of renewable energy generation on farms tend to be wind turbines and solar. Now, these um, facilities tend to have similar physical impacts, but those physical impacts can be more or less acceptable on different types of, of businesses. So these are high level generalizations. But with wind energy, um, we all know those those turbines are getting taller. So they need to be pinned um, securely in place. So they're on very large, quite deep uh, concrete um, footings. Uh, and it's probably going to be very hard to remove um, the, those footings at end of life. Between the turbines, there's also um, quite often wide access roads and they need a wider road when they're constructing them because they need to get concrete trucks and um, et cetera there. And they um, do a lot of earthwork and compaction. They don't always let you know that level of, of impact, so it's really good to look at. They also then put easements in um, where their underground power is. And when they've got easements, um, that also gives them certain rights. And we have had instances where um, a company will allow another piece of infrastructure on their easement without the landholder being involved or, or getting any benefit from that. We're increasingly hearing stories about um, wind turbines impacting on the use of aerial spraying. Uh, we will have consultants say, no, you can lawfully operate, you know, cars will let you operate a plane, but we hear from the actual crop dusters, for example, that they can't get insurance or the insurance for them to operate near those turbines is cost prohibited. So that can um, impact on the ability of, of spraying, um, including off-site if it's it's near some of those very tall wind turbines. And obviously when you're doing a bit of um, very large concrete footings and some roadworks and, and digging things, um, it can impact on your drainage. Um, so it's quite important to understand those um, all of the, if you're thinking about um, hosting renewable energy in, in wind, really make sure the companies are giving you all of that information um, so that you can actually properly consider um, the benefit. I've got one producer that, that says they probably break even, um, but just the, the loss of productivity from you know degrading the soil has probably neutralised the payment that they're getting from the company. When it comes to solar, um, again, it's a different type of, of footings, um, but you've got lots of, of little um, footings and you've got conduits um, throughout the whole network for electricity. Uh, some of the benefits is they can provide shade and shelter for sheep and that technology is 
getting better when it comes to sheep. Um, the companies usually tend to like to, you know, do the stock stand and, and as cheap as possible. Um, but there are some stories of, of people that have managed to um, have a different design for cattle because cattle obviously require a, a taller structure. Um, and also um, they tend to rub up against the conduit. So it's um, making sure that you're getting those benefits. Um, it's more difficult for cropping, um, but there is this field called agrivoltaics. It's happening a little bit more in Europe and some people are trialling it here, which is actually changing the design of solar so that you can operate um, certain machinery and, and grow crops to a, uh, a certain level. But again, similarly on that, actually make sure you understand exactly what they're doing um, and how that would potentially impact on your productivity. Thanks, Charles. So a lot of you are probably most interested in transmission at the moment. So um, the proposals, the active proposals we have on the ground in the west of the state are all above ground. And unlike generation, the company doesn't have to get your approval to put that infrastructure on your um, land. They will try and get it, but at the end of the day, they can, there are processes for them to force approvals. Some of the existing transmission lines I've seen above ground have 30 metre by 30 metre by 15 metre deep concrete footings. And we believe um, some of these transmission lines will be higher. So, um, my my um, guess is that the, the higher they are, the larger the um, footings will be. Uh, in New South Wales, um, irrigation is um, pretty well banned under transmission. Uh, certain types of irrigation are restricted in Victoria, but they are um, saying that they will allow some types of irrigation, but that's something we need to watch. Again, like wind turbines, if you if you're having thirty to fifty concrete trucks per um, footing, you're going to need to get those trucks to the different pylons. So that's roads, that's um, damage to your soil and, and compaction. Uh, we're hearing from some some of the guides that. Um, won't be able to stubble burn in the easement. I'm not sure how you stop um, stubble burning. Uh, issues with the use of drones or planes in the area. Depending on the type of GPS ag you use, there can be interference. Um, there is a requirement for machinery higher than five metres. So some of the, the kit these days is larger than that. And there are um, the obvious visual impacts. And, but also safety issues with, with heavy smoke and overhead. Undergrounding, um, it has a different set of issues. It obviously doesn't have as many of the um, direct impacts on um, use of things like GPS ag and drones. But if it's across your farm rather than in a, a road reserve or a rail reserve, it's still quite significant trenching and the conduit actually does heat the soil and there are, um, are restrictions um, on what you can do, a bit like a gas pipeline, but, but slightly different. So um, they're the kind of things that uh, the energy companies or the transmission planners will need to know which one of these um, or set of these are important to your farm and what are the, the considerations around that. Thanks, Charles. Um, I will be quicker on the survey. Uh, so the key thing, I've, I've um, included the definitions and these will be included in the survey, but it's always good to, to start to think about the, the language that's been using. So we're looking at renewable energy zones. Um, so that's where they will be promoting generation, so wind and solar. That might be by streamlining approvals. It might not be. We don't know yet. 
and then it's obviously the renewable energy zones are likely to be where the transmission will be going and linking as well. So linked to renewable energy zones are renew renewable generation projects. So that's the turbines and the solar and the transmission infrastructure. Uh, they are mentioning the grid. So we talk about transmission and with a lot of these transmission projects, uh, they're not proposing to fix the distribution network. So the grid is more that distribution network. Um, so it's important to sort of understand those differences. Um, and I think the next ones are probably self-explanatory. So Charles, the next slide. So I've just given you a few um, screenshots of, of the different types of questions. Um, it's good that they're doing a survey. It's probably not the perfect survey. Uh, so I really do recommend um, you just have a pen and paper beside you. And if you think you haven't been able to answer a question properly or that there wasn't enough information or you weren't able to give enough information, just make a note of it and you can send that to me or you can contact someone at VicRid or at a community meeting. You can bring these, these issues along because I think that will start to give the nuance of, of maybe that's the people that are, are doing this work haven't quite understood the nature of that issue. Uh, next one, thanks, Charles. So some of some of the questions ask you to list the items in order of your preference. So it is literally just clicking and dragging, um, and sometimes it's a very long list and it's it's slightly annoying. But just be prepared to kind of um, drag them and check at the end because sometimes they magically move or you've you've dropped them halfway so that it's reflecting what you need the next one thanks charles um so when it comes to community benefit um they are giving you some some little questions here so that it's you know should it be payments to um to the neighbours, should it be local community groups? And uh, I'm glad to see that they have actually included distribution network upgrades because in the past they haven't thought about that. So you might be getting transmission whether you like it or not, but you're still on a single wire earth return and your um, industry in town can't expand because there's um, limited un unreliable power. So it's worthwhile starting to think about um, what benefits to your local community do you want to see um, from these um, proposals. Thanks, Charles. <coughs> um, do you want to do this one, Charles, or do you want me to keep going? Keep going. Keep going, okay. So obviously, um, once this survey and mapping exercise is finished, and it's now 16th of February, um, the team at VicRid will be starting to look at all of these issues and preparing um, what they think the key issues in, in different communities will be for those meetings. So being engaged in this process and, and starting to think about the next steps, really start to think about what would work on your farm and why or why it wouldn't work, what you would need to make it work, what issues are incompatible with your operations and, you know, with the idea of can they do something to, to, um, to resolve those issues and really what kind of figure would you need um, to be paid to compensate for your losses incurred each year from hosting? And that's what we mean by commercial consent. It's a bit like, you know, what rent you'd need to be paid to make, make good for the harm. 
Next one, Charles. Thanks. So, um, obviously, a, a lot of you on this call have probably already been been doing this um, quite well, but there is an opportunity to start to um, broaden your local communities um, or your councils or your local MPs' knowledge of your issues and your concerns rather than you're just put in the, the, the not in my back area, the NIMBY box. So um, think about, you know, uh, what are the key issues that you've um, raised, how you can promote that. Um, each council um, will have a planning department. Um, and when it comes to the planning approvals and the EES processes, the information that council has in their planning scheme or doesn't have um, about agriculture, about what needs to be protected, about the importance of um, production types to secondary industries, processing, etc. Um, that can actually uh, make a difference between how well these projects are um, assessed and how well agricultural considerations are dealt with. So feel free to talk to you, your local councillor or your planning department about what work they need to be doing to make sure that local knowledge is easily accessible in that process. Um, you've got, you know, regional development, Victoria. Some of you will have different um, local um, development or business groups that will be looking at, at um, the benefits and there are some benefits from renewable um, energy, but they're not necessarily going to know the detail of, of why you're concerned. So uh, it's good to be able to talk through those things with them because then they can better advocate for right renewable energy, right place, right regulation. Uh, keep your, your local members of parliament in the loop and work uh, as a community to, you know, support each other, to help each other sort of understand and, and get to that detail about how do we do this better and, and how do we actually um, make sure that, that agriculture is, is um, better considered in the process and work, you know, as communities across regions. And I think a few people on, on this call that were originally Western Renewable Links, for example, have been working with BNI West. So it's that sharing the knowledge and obviously keep keep us in the loop as well so that, you know, we can help work with you, but also advocate, collate those local issues and advocate them up as what are the key issues across the state. Thank you, Lisa, um, and thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Um, I hope that is useful. So the, um, you know, our task right now is to use this opportunity to put forward uh, the concerns that farmers have around um, renewable energy zones and transmission development. Um, we, it's really important that we don't make the assumption that government have the answers. Um, particularly in being able to plan for these projects. Um, we've seen that happen, um, uh, unfortunately, with the debacles around VNI West and the Western Renewables Link. Um, and both Lisa and I and, and the VFF team, we have seen uh, a lot of the, the information that government is currently thinking it will use to understand impacts on agriculture and particularly a lot of their mapping and it is seriously deficient. Um, and so we are using this as the opportunity to um, put forward uh, uh, to government the, the issues we see that this will have um, with agriculture. And that means uh, being able to point out where there is incompatible um, types of agriculture, um, but also where there is also compatible forms of agriculture with renewable energy and transmission. And that is different across the state um, from paddock to paddock. So uh, it's really important that 
for those of you uh, who are currently facing um, the existing transmission projects that you use this as an opportunity to put forward um, those concerns and keep reiterating those concerns. But I also encourage you to share that with farmers across the state because um, they could very well be next for inappropriate um, renewable energy and transmission development. And it's important that, um, that they have that contribution to making sure that the government uh, has the best information available to it to get these plans right. Um, so the VFF is working um, uh, in good faith with the government around this plan uh, at the moment. Um, after all, VFF called for this plan, uh, and but what we need is for farmers to uh, to give that detail to assist us in providing that detail to make sure that the planning is right. Um, I note there's been a few comments in the chat tonight. Thank you for your engagement. If you have any further questions, uh, if you're a VFF member and want to get in touch with the policy team uh, with Lisa, Lisa has um, left her email address in the chat. You're always welcome to email policy team at VFF, um, and that is the best at vff.org.au, and that is always the best way to get in touch with both Lisa and myself. Um, we're here to um, assist you um, and uh, if you need anything, please reach out. With that, we'll call it an evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all your efforts on these issues uh, and look forward to seeing you soon. Have a good night.